What's up guys, Groovy Guitar Dude here with a beginner guitar tutorial for Paper Rings by Taylor Swift. If this video helps you out, hit that like and subscribe button and let me know down in the comments below what are the songs by Taylor Swift that you want to learn on guitar. Guys, the first thing that you want to know to play Paper Rings on guitar is that in order to get to some bar chords and keep this as beginner friendly as possible, we're going to capo up to second fret. And if you don't have a capo, I'll have a link to get this capo for free right up here. The next thing that you want to know for Paper Rings is the structure of this song. We're going to start out with a verse, then go to pre-chorus, then chorus then verse, pre-chorus, chorus again, then we're gonna have a bridge, and then we're gonna finish up with one last chorus. And you'll notice that that bridge and the very last chorus are starred. That's because we have a key change after the second chorus. I'll get into more about what that means towards the end of this lesson, and we'll go into more detail. And the last thing you wanna know before we dive into Paper Rings is the five chords that you need to play this song. The first one is C. The next one is G. The next one is A. The next one is D. And the last one is F. And I'll have a beginner way to play that F chord, as well as chord charts for all the other chords in the pinned comment below for those of you who need them. And with all that in mind, guys, let's dive into Paper Rings. Man, I totally love this song. It's just a classic, happy Taylor Swift love song, and I absolutely love it. It's just a great, great vibe kind of song. So with that in mind, the first thing that we hear in this song is the verse. We're actually going to play the same thing for our, our verses as what we're going to play for our pre-choruses. And what that is, is a little combination of a picking pattern and a chord and a strum pattern. So that may sound a little bit confusing, but let's walk through it. So first thing we're going to have is this little picking pattern. What we're going to do is we're going to start up here on 8th fret relative to the capo. So with the capo on, we're pretending that this is 1st fret, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, so on and so forth. So we're going to start on 8th fret of the low E relative to the capo. We're going to hit that 8th fret and we're going to slide it down to 3rd fret. So just like that. We're going to leave a little bit of space there for a second. And then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to hit that 8th fret on the low E and slide it down to 3rd fret. And then same thing after that, we're going to leave a little bit of space there. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to go 3rd fret on the A string, 3rd fret on the low E string, and then 5th fret on the low E string. Those last three notes are going to be pretty quick, pretty close together, so kind of like about that speed. And the last we're gonna go to a G chord and we're gonna use this strum pattern. We're gonna go down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. Just like that. And that's it guys, that is gonna repeat over and over again for your verses and your pre-courses. So another little walkthrough of what that looks like. We're gonna go eighth fret on the low E, slide down to third. A Little bit of space. Eighth fret low E, slide down to third. A Little bit of space. Third on A, third on E fifth on E, a little bit of space, and then we got that G chord, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. Just like that, repeated throughout all of our verses and all of our choruses. Now, there's actually two guitars that are being played in this part. One is just kind of keeping the rhythm, and one is playing this. So what you can actually do if you're a little bit more of an experienced guitarist is you can play the rhythm in between each of those notes by using a technique called chucking. If you don't know what chucking is, all it is is you're gonna mute your notes by softly resting your fingers on the strings over here, not pushing down, but just softly resting them there, and then picking. And it's just gonna give a ch -ch 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 kind of muted muffled note sound and that just kind of will kind of mimic what's being played on drums and give a little bit of rhythm to the song. Now this is a little bit more of an advanced technique so we're not going to spend a ton of time on it but if you know how to do this kind of thing it's a good thing to incorporate here. So just a little example of what that would look like is about like this. Again same picking pattern we're just doing a little bit of chucking in between to kind of keep the rhythm there. It kind of would go like this. We'd go Obviously, that's a little bit slowed down, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that, but that's just a little example of how you can incorporate chucking. So, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a couple of times, just a little playthrough of what that picking pattern will look like without the chucking, which is what I would recommend for beginners, and then after that, I'll do a little playthrough of what it would look like with the chucking for those of you who are a little bit more experienced and want to try to mess with some of that. So, first a little playthrough without the chucking a couple of times through what your verses and choruses will look like on paper rings is about like this. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
And now a little playthrough of that same exact thing, but with some chucking thrown in there just to kind of fill it out a little bit more. From there guys, we're into what's being played for our first and second chorus. So not the last chorus, but the first and the second one. For the first and the second chorus, we're gonna start with a chord progression and a strum pattern. Our chord progression is gonna be C four times, F twice, and G twice. And what we're gonna do for our strum pattern for each one of those chords is gonna be down, down, up, down, up, relative to the amount of times that we're gonna play each chord. So for our C chord, our first chord as an example, we're gonna play down, down, up, down, up, four times for that chord. So a little walkthrough of what that'll look like is about like this. We'll go down, down, up, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up. Just like that, and we're gonna play that twice, so twice through that chord progression with that strum pattern, and then what we're gonna do at the end of each of those first and second chorus is we're gonna tag it with that same little picking pattern strumming chord thing that we did for our verse in our pre-chorus. So same exact thing as we did before, a little run through of what that is again. We got eighth fret on the low E, slide to third. Eighth fret on the low E, slide to third again. And then we got third on A, third on E, fifth on E. And then we got the G down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. Just like that, we're gonna tag that onto the end right after we do twice through that chord progression first. So not gonna spend a ton of time on that little picking thing since we already went over that, but a quick little walkthrough of what our whole entire chorus all together will look like. First, we're gonna hit that chord progression two times. So we'll go down, down, up, down, up, 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 down, down, again. Down, down, up, down, up, 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 down, down, and then it's that little picking thing. And to the G. And that's gonna take us into our second verse or our bridge if you're in the second chorus. So with all that in mind guys, one time played all the way through without me talking of that chorus chord progression with that little verse picking pattern thing that we're gonna throw in there as well will look about like this. And guys, finally, we're into the last part of the song, which is that last bridge and chorus. And we're actually gonna be playing the same thing for both of those. So here we're gonna have what's called a key change. And if you don't know what a key change is, it's just exactly what it sounds like. It's where the song changes keys, usually in the middle of the song, a lot of times at the bridge of the song. So for this, it's actually a very easy part of the song. We don't have any picking or anything like that. We're just gonna have a chord progression and a strum pattern for both that last bridge and that last chorus. Our chord progression for that is gonna be D, four times, G twice, and A twice. And we're gonna use the same strum pattern that we use for our choruses. So down, down, up, down, up for each chord relative to the amount of times that we're playing each of those chords. So again, for D, we're gonna do that four times. So down, down, up, down, up, 
four times for that D chord. And that's it. We don't have any picking tacked onto the end of this or anything. We're pretty much just going to repeat that chord progression with that strum pattern from the bridge all the way out through the rest of the song. So one more quick little walkthrough of what that whole chord progression with that strum pattern will look like is about like this. We'll start with our D chord. We'll go down, down, up, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up. Just like that, and like I said, pretty much pretty much after our second chorus, after the very end of our second chorus, once we get into that bridge for the entire rest of the song, we'll be playing that chord progression with that strum pattern. So guys, a couple of times through that chord progression and strum pattern that'll play on our last bridge and our last chorus of Paper Rings will look about like this. that is everything you just need to know to play paper rings on guitar. As always, if you have any questions, you can hit me up in the comments down below. I'm usually pretty quick getting back to those. And again, if this video helped you out, hit that subscribe button. I have about 700 other guitar and ukulele lessons on this channel, and I usually try to post at least three to five new lessons every single week. So if you're learning guitar or ukulele, there could not be a more perfect channel for you to check out. If you wanna see what song I'm jamming on today or pictures of my dog, you can hit up my Instagram story at the Groovy Guitar Dude. Link for that will be in the description below. Ah, oh, guys, I love paper rings so much. It's just a classic, happy Taylor Swift love song, and I just, I love it. I feel like, again, this is one of those songs that she kind of got back to her roots a little bit with, like with Lover. Same kind of thing. Like, I feel like this song could have been on, you know, Speak Now or Red or something like that. It just is a classic Taylor Swift love song, and it's just a happy, you feel good listening to this one. I also love Paper Rings for Beginner Guitarists because there is a lot going on instrumentally, but none of it is too complicated that a beginner guitarist can't get it down. When you break it down to the bare bones of this, really, it's just a picking pattern and a couple of chord progressions with some drum patterns. And I know that that's kind of a generalization, but if you break it down to the roots of it, that's all stuff that beginners can get down. All these are pretty basic chords. Again, if you don't have your F chord down yet, I'll have a beginner way to play that in the pinned comment below. Totally cool. You don't have to have bar chords down right away if you're a beginner. No worries about that. And then like I said, the only other part of this song that is a little bit more advanced or can be a little bit more advanced is if you choose to try to do that do that picking pattern with the chucking, right? So what that is, is just keeping rhythm in between each of those notes. Like I said, I think there's two guitars going in the actual song. I know there's two guitars going in the actual song, but that can kind of add a cool element to it if you're a little bit more of an experienced player. If you're not, don't worry about it. The best way to handle that is go ahead and learn the picking pattern by itself without the chucking, get that down, and then learn a little bit more about chucking and experiment with it, and then add that chucking in once you kind of have both of those elements down, the picking pattern and the chucking by themselves, then put them together. But it's a really cool element if you can kind of add that, incorporate that. If not, it still sounds great. So guys, I love this song. I had a lot of fun learning it. I hope you guys have a lot of fun learning it as well, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see y'all soon.